Today's video is all about creating your very own custom water slide decal for your guitar. Welcome back to Addicted to Gear folks. I'm Tony. Today we're talking about creating custom made water slide decals for your custom guitar builds. If you're currently building a custom guitar, like I happen to be doing, eventually you're going to get to the stage in the game where your guitar is going to be, for all intents and purposes, finished, except it's going to be lacking a name on the headstock. And there's just something a little naked looking about a guitar with nothing on the headstock. I don't feel like it looks finished. And I don't necessarily want to put someone else's name on it. Why would I want to do that? It's my guitar. I built it the way I want. I'm going to finish it off with a custom water slide decal. Now the process involved in making your own decals is not extremely difficult. Uh, but there are some key places in the process where you can mess things up and have to restart. And nobody wants to do that. You're basically wasting time and energy. So I'm going to show you in today's video how I go about creating my very own decals. Uh, it's kind of like an arts and crafts portion of the guitar build. Uh, you know, you have to be handy with scissors and you have to be able to create a little bit of graphics to make it look nice, but it's all doable. So let's mosey on over to my messy workbench and let's start the process. I'll show you what it takes. Consider making one of your own water slide decals for your guitar, kind of like the craft portion of guitar building. You know, it's a little bit less involved than actually putting parts together on a guitar, but it's still challenging and it requires a lot of attention and careful steps. So today I'm going to walk you through the process for making a water slide decal for this custom Telecaster build that I'm working on. So the first thing you're going to need is a neck. And obviously, you're going to want to spray your neck with some kind of clear finish. You can either go poly. In this case, I'm using a lacquer. All right. So you can see it's already been sprayed. If I hold it up in the light, you can see there's still a little bit of bumps here. So this has not been sanded smooth. Uh, I recommend sanding it smooth before you actually apply the water slide decal. The reason for that is that it the decal will sit... Uh, flatter on the surface of the headstock and when you apply the additional coats on top of the water slide it'll just make it a lot nicer when you finally sand everything flat all right so step one in the process is actually deciding what kind of design you're going to be making for your guitar um, i recommend going with something uh you know unique in, in my case, this is a scrap piece of paper, by the way, but I just want to show you the uh, artwork that I decided to do for my design here. So I decided to go with something like this, a little script font, which I think is pretty cool. I like the handwritten style of this. And I decided to go with a name for the guitar, Little Rocker because it's kind of a spoof, tongue-in-cheek kind of a thing. Uh, if you remember when you were a kid way back, You'd get these catalogs from Sears or, you know, some other store where they would sell these plastic looking electric guitars and they were often called little rockers. So I thought it would be a cool throwback to uh, those, you know, children's guitars. So I'm calling it the little rocker custom. So what I did was I created this artwork in Canva. You can use any software you're comfortable with. You can basically create something in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. You just want to be able to lay down um, some words, basically. Now, in this particular case, I decided to go with simple black lettering for the entire logo. Uh, you can also use color if you wish, but uh, just be forewarned that color sometimes doesn't show up properly depending on the color of the wood of the headstock. So if you're going with a darker headstock, sometimes you won't see the colors as easily. So in this particular case, I decided just to keep it simple. Little rocker, custom, black letters, and that's about it. The reason why I print on a scrap piece of paper first is just to get the size right. You want to make sure that it's not too big or too small and it fits your headstock the right way. So I, I usually make copies like this to fill up a sheet of uh, 8.5 by 11 
because the sheets of uh, paper that you're gonna eventually print on are pretty expensive. They're over a dollar a sheet. So if you're making a lot of different projects, custom built guitars, or perhaps you wanna have a few extras in case you mess one up, it's best to lay out a few in a row like this. I recommend cutting out one of the logos so that you can actually do a WYSIWYG fitting on your headstock. So what I like to do is I usually just cut it out with some scissors and eventually uh, when you actually make the real one that you're gonna apply on your guitar, you're probably gonna wanna cut it out so that it's, you know, a little bit, the cutout is following the shape of your of your design a little bit better. You wanna cut it out so that you can put it on your headstock and figure out the rough location of where it's gonna be and make sure that the size is correct. For me, I'm gonna make it so that it's actually following the curve. Uh, this is just really quickly cut out, but I'm gonna pay more attention so that it this will follow the curve of the guitar. For the fitting, I just wanna make sure that it's gonna be the right size. So my string uh, T is gonna be there and it's gonna be about that big. It's not gonna interfere with the uh, tuners when you put them in there. So that's gonna be a good size. And because the font is relatively thin, uh, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so it's easier to see. So that's what I like to do, just dry fit it before I do any uh, final printing on the water slide paper. I think that looks good. So let's talk a little bit about the actual water slide paper that you're going to get. You can get this on Amazon. I'll put the link in the notes section. Uh, not all inkjet paper is made the same way. There's better quality, worse quality, more expensive, less expensive. The important thing is that you want to get um, paper that is made for your type of printer. This is made for inkjet. I'm going to be using an Epson inkjet printer. If you're using a laser printer, you'd, you want to make sure that it's going to be made for laser. And the paper usually comes in two formats. You have glossy like this one, or you have matte. I prefer to go with glossy since my guitar neck is going to be glossy anyways. I did a little test on regular paper. You can see how dark it is on this particular sheet is pretty dark. When you print at 100 and let's say 50 DPI or 300 DPI uh, on inkjet printer paper, it actually doesn't print very dark. You can see here, just as a comparison, this is a Sharpie that I trace the logo with. This is the actual print at a, I think it's 150 DPI here. So the printer doesn't put down a lot of ink. And what ends up happening, if you can see this, it's kind of gray. It's not really black. That's not what you want. You wanna try and get as much color saturation as you can. So please print at at least 1200 DPI and more. If your printer can actually go higher than that, go as high as your printer will allow you to do. It makes quite a bit of a difference. I'll show you the, the difference here, all right? This is the low resolution print. This is the same water slide paper at a higher resolution. This is about 1200 or so. You can see the difference in the color. This is much darker. The ink is much more saturated here. And this is what you want. You wanna try and get the color as dark as possible. So that's very important. Keep that in mind whenever you're creating one of your water slide decals, all right? The next step in the process is to actually coat the water slide decal with something that will stop the ink from running. Right now, your ink is basically sitting on the top of this sheet. And if you were to put this sheet in uh, some warm water to peel away the top of the decal paper uh, from the backing, what's gonna happen is this inkjet printer ink is gonna run in the water. It's just gonna smudge and it's gonna ruin your decal. So what you need to do is you need to actually coat the paper with something so you can sandwich it between the two layers and the ink will not run. So many people will recommend using something like this. This is a Krylon um, acrylic coating that you can use for different types of uh, medias. I don't really like this. 
and I recommend not necessarily going with this, and I'll explain why. My guitar neck is gonna be, well, is coated in lacquer. So I like to use lacquer on my decal paper. The reason why, there's two things. First, I feel like the lacquer goes on more evenly, smoothly, and secondly, the lacquer, since it's gonna be sprayed and sandwiched between more lacquer uh, will not react badly since it's the same material, it's the same chemical, right? If you're going to mix two types of um, finishes, let's say poly and lacquer or acrylic and lacquer, you might have a chemical reaction which will not necessarily work very well or might discolor over time. So I prefer to use the same finish on my paper. I'll show you the difference very quickly here. So you can see here we have on the left the Little Rocker custom decal logo and we have another one on the right. So the right one was sprayed with the Krylon, this stuff. If I hold it up to the light, now I don't know if you're going to be able to see this correctly or not, but if I hold it up to the light here, you can see that it goes on very badly. Bumps and patches that have not been correctly coated. And it's just rough. I don't really like the way it sits on the paper. This has been treated with um, the same type of lacquer that I apply on my guitar. And although it's a little bit more yellow, I don't mind the yellowness aspect, but if I shine it in the light, you can see it's a, a lot more even and it's been, and it covered everything a lot better except for the corner where I was holding it with my fingers. And this is just one coat. I usually like to apply at least two coats just to make sure it is completely sealed and then give it about a couple of hours to dry minimum before I actually use it. So I'm going to go with this. I recommend you use the same finish as what you're going to be applying on your guitar. You will avoid issues down the line. So I'm going to show you how I go about actually sanding down the front of the headstock uh, to make it a little bit less uh, bumpy and more even. So I started off with some warm water uh, with a thousand grit sandpaper. Just put it in there with a drop of uh, dish soap just to saturate it with water. And uh, I'm gonna be using that to sand this down. I have a little eraser that I like to use as a sanding block. And the reason why I like the eraser is because it is flexible a little bit so that you can get into the curves here if you need to. So I'm gonna try and reflect this in the light so you can see what is going on. But I'm just basically lightly sanding the front of the headstock and I'm going very gently. You don't need to put a lot of pressure. You can actually feel the um, stickiness of the paper on the front of the headstock and as it comes becomes smoother you can tell that it's actually getting rid of those bumps and I'm just putting very light pressure on it at this point. I'm not putting heavy pressure on it at all. And um, when it starts to stick, you need more water. And um, I like going slow. And I also like cleaning it off so that you can see what's going on and wiping off the water. You can see the areas that are no longer shiny. That's basically what you want to do. It's the same process as buffing out a guitar. You just want to get the entire surface uh, matte and then you could start making it shiny. But in this particular case, because we're going to be spraying it with additional layers of lacquer, we're going to be going back and forth a little bit. All right, getting better. So just a little bit more and we're going to be done here. So I'm not going to bore you with all of the you know, the, all of the steps, but I'm just going to carry on with this till I get a completely matte finish. And then we can go to the next step. So after sanding for a few minutes, you can see how much more matte 
and smooth the front of the headstock is. So we got rid of all those bumps. So when we apply the headstock decal, um, it's gonna be a lot more of a smoother surface to lay down the water slide decal. And so you it won't look as cloudy underneath. It'll be more transparent and it's worked very well in the past for me. So that's the idea here. We wanna start off with a relatively flat surface. So you can see the difference between the back, which hasn't been sanded, and the front that has been, been sanded. Eventually the entire neck will look like this when I'm done, but we're concentrating on the headstock for the time being. So we're ready at this point to cut out the water slide decal, put it in some warm water and apply it to the front of the headstock. Here's a little before and after shot of the neck. This is the neck after I sprayed it with some uh, lightly aged lacquer. Uh, it didn't actually look as dark as I wanted it to. So I actually sprayed it with one coat of heavier aged lacquer and then continued with clear lacquer on top of that just to give it a little bit more of a richer color. I think it looks a lot nicer now, nice and rich and dark, just like uh, I was hoping. And uh, now the neck hasn't been buffed or anything like that at this point, so it's still gonna require some buffing to shine it all up. But uh, I just wanted to give you a little before and after shot of the neck. We're gonna be applying the water slide decal to the front of the headstock. Um, I sprayed two coats of lacquer onto this. And as you can see, I used some tape to uh, secure it down while I was spraying it so that the little piece of paper doesn't fly all over the place when you're trying to actually spray it all even. So I'm just gonna cut that portion of the water slide decal off because we don't need that. And I'm gonna proceed to trim out the water slide um, so that, you know, it's not gonna be a square cutout. I want it to be a little bit more round. And um, you probably would have seen on some of the fender decals, the early ones, that they were also kind of cut out. They were not square. So I'm gonna do the same thing um, I don't want to go too far away from the lettering, but I want it to be nice and flow without any jagged edges. So I'll just quickly cut that out. You can use an X-Acto if you want, but um, scissors work. This is where you, you're going to see if those skills you picked up in kindergarten, those scissor skills are working for you or not around there, that's where I think it looks good. All right, so to be able to get that water slide off, we're gonna need some water. And you wanna make sure you have relatively clean water in there. Warm water would be best. Uh, I also have these little um, tweezers. It makes things easier. And uh, if you don't wanna touch the water slide too much, these are really nice. So if you have them, use them. If not, you can use your fingers, doesn't really matter. We're gonna drop the water slide in there and you're gonna see that it basically curls up. The water is warm. Give it a about, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe, maybe a little bit less, just to soak up the water a little bit. And then you can take it out Get rid of the water. At this point, you wanna make sure nothing is nothing is, um, none of the ink is running. Put it where you want it to be and then slide it off. Now, while it's wet, you still can move it around. You can place it where you want it to be, where it looks right to you. And you can gently, gently, while holding down the water slide, 
try and squeegee out most of the water underneath. As you can see, I can still move it around because there is some water underneath of it. The idea here is to get it to lay down flat, as flat as possible. Once you get it, most of the uh, you know wrinkles out, you don't want to have any wrinkling underneath, then let it be. And it helps to look at it in the reflection. You want it to be nice and flat. If that looks good to you and it looks good to me, I'm going to let that dry before I do anything. The reason why you want to let it dry, you want to make all the moisture come off underneath. So that doesn't wrinkle up and it doesn't uh, curl on itself. Because if it does curl on itself, it's just going to give you more work when you actually sp spray the lacquer. So that's about how I want it to look. We'll let it dry. And then we can start applying some more clear coats of lacquer on top of it. Through Video Magic, we now have a coated headstock here. I coated the headstock with two and a half coats of clear lacquer. It's dry to the touch. I can actually touch it, no issues here. Uh, right now, you can still see when I shine the light on the decal, you can still see the edge of the decal as I cut it. So that means we don't have enough clear lacquer on the water slide decal we have to continue applying more layers i would estimate we would probably need three or four layers more before we can actually start the wet sanding process one tip i want to share with you guys is during the initial first spray pass don't go very thick on the spray keep it um, to a dust coat just a light spray coat just to coat the water slide decal, let that dry, and then you can gradually build up the follow-up coats of lacquer a little at a time. You don't want to put in a heavy coat right off the bat because you could sometimes cause the edge of the water slide decal to curl up because of the liquid, and you don't want that, that to happen. That just makes it a little bit longer to actually then go back and, and cover that all up with clear lacquer and sand it down. So take your time, make sure that the water slide decal is as flat as possible. And uh, if you go slow, you shouldn't have any issues. When you finally get enough coats on the headstock and you don't really feel the edge of the water slide with your finger, you can then start the wet sanding process. I highly recommend you use some kind of a sanding block. I'll use a, an eraser like this. This works really well. Wrap it in 800 grit wet dry sandpaper that has been soaked in warm water with a drop of, of dish soap. And uh, go very slow, don't put a lot of pressure, just go back and forth till the front of the headstock becomes dull, at which point you can switch over to a thousand grit or higher and start the buffing process and uh, finish it off with some uh, polishing compound. You can hand rub that at that point and it should come out nice and shiny at the end of it. And if you go really slow and you follow the steps involved, there's no reason why you won't end up with a really nice a uh, factory finish at the end of it all that you can be super proud of and I think it would be uh, it's a great finishing touch for a custom guitar build like this and when you look back on your hard work I'm sure you will be proud of the effort that you put into it to make this guitar your own personal project. As we carry on forward from the last section, which is applying the decal and letting it dry, I'm going to show you the steps involved where we finish that up and put the guitar together and eventually end up with a super looking and hopefully great sounding custom Telecaster. I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys are excited too. And of course, we're going to also be demoing the great pickups from Mr. Glenn's pickups that are going to be going into that Telecaster build and I'm really anxious to hear those pickups for myself because I haven't tried them yet. 
They look awesome and I'm sure they're going to sound great, but I just want to get to the point where I can play and rock out that guitar and show you what the guitar and those pickups sound like. So if you're into building your own guitars and you like this type of content where we show you the steps involved, please hit the bell icon so you can be subscribed to the channel and you'll be notified when we post the next video. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Please leave your comments below if you have any. I'll respond. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We'll be back with more.